a 100% response rate and a 71% remission rate in 12 months after just two doses. I think we're just about to enter a new treatment paradigm in psychiatry. Cybin, a Toronto-based pharmaceutical company, is developing a variety of different psychedelic compounds with its lead molecule being CYB003. CYB3 is a psilocin analog being developed for the treatment of major depressive disorder. Psilocin comes from psilocybin, also known as magic mushrooms. Now, if you want to learn about some of the differences between CYB3 and psilocybin, I'll leave a link in the description of a video I did. Now, this is not a sponsored video or anything. Cybin is not paying me to do this, although I am a shareholder because I like the stock. And honestly, I'm pretty bullish and now we'll talk about why. Cybin conducted a phase two trial looking at CYB3 for the treatment of major depressive disorder. In this trial, patients had a four week screening period. Now in order to be in this trial, patients had to have a MADRA score of 21 or greater, representing a moderate to severe patient population. Now the MADRAS is the Montgomery Asperg Depression Rating Scale used to measure the severity of depressive episodes in mood disorders. The MADRAS is a tool and rating scale that other pharmaceutical companies use to evaluate if their medications are efficacious. Another inclusion criteria is that the patient had to have an inadequate response to their current antidepressant. For this trial, patients could remain on their antidepressant, so no tapering was needed to come off their current medication. Now, the primary endpoint of the study is their change in their MADRA score at day 21 compared to baseline. Day one is when they get their single dose of CYB3. Now, a secondary endpoint that they looked at was the change in the MADRA score at week six after a second dose, where they could then enter a 12-month open-label extension study. Now, the doses used in the phase two trial was a 12 milligram dose and a 16 milligram dose. Now, if we take a look at the primary endpoint, we can see the numbers after one dose of CYB3. For the 12 milligrams, which included 15 people, the average improvement was a decrease by 14.1 points on the MADRAS at day 21. For the 16 milligram, which included nine people, the average improvement was a decrease by about 13 points. Both were statistically significant. Now looking at this next slide, you can see that the second dose produced an additional incremental benefit in the patients for both the 12 milligram and the 16 milligram. And then recently, Cybin just released the 12 month follow up data from their phase two trial, which is pretty astonishing. At the 12 month mark, 100% of patients in the 16 milligram group were responders. 100%. This is unheard of. Yes, it was a small study with the data coming from seven patients in the trial, but it represents an efficacy well worth pursuing. What might be even more impressive is that 71% of the patients were in remission, with remission being defined as a MADRA score of 10 or less. In the 12 milligram arm, you also see a sustained benefit as well, with 60% having a response and 50% achieving remission at 12 months with only two doses of CYB3. Now, even with small numbers, you can have highly impactful data. Cybin actually would have had a higher remission score. However, two of the patients missed the cutoff by one point. They had uh, MADRA scores of 11 as opposed to 10, so they were not included as remitters. Next, looking at the safety profile of CYB3, we can see that CYB3 was generally well tolerated with no serious adverse events. The most common adverse events were nausea, elevated blood pressure, and headache which are deemed to be mild to moderate in intensity and only lasted during the session. The increase in blood pressure and heart rate were transient and resolved without any intervention. There were also no clinically relevant changes in any biomarkers. Now importantly, there was no adverse event of suicidal ideation or behavior. And this safety data remained relatively the same at the 12 month mark as well, with no additional adverse events being reported, as well as no additional suicidal ideation or behavior. So given this data, I created a SWOT analysis to kind of highlight some of my thoughts on CYB3. So first of all, strengths. Number one, this efficacy is unheard of. You're seeing an average reduction in MADRA score by about 23 points with CYB3 after just two doses and a one-year follow-up. Now, the average baseline MADRA score of the patients in the trial was about 32, so they did represent a very severe population. If you take a look at this slide, you can see how CYB3 compares to some of the other adjunctive treatments for depression right now. It results in an improvement of about four times of that compared to the other adjunctive medications for depression. And this is only their data at week three. When you look at the 12-month follow-up, 
which included that second dose of CYP3, that number jumps up to 23 point reduction in their MADRAS score. Next, it's gonna be its rapid onset. The onset of psychedelic effect of CYB3 happens within about 15 minutes, with the peak effects lasting about two hours. Now, why this is important is because one of the most cited trials that has been done in psychiatry is known as the STAR-D trial. Now, in that trial, we found that about one in three patients had remission at week 12. Now, about half of those patients remitted in between the weeks of week six and week 12. This means that in order to achieve this 33% remission, which really isn't that great, it also took quite a bit of time, up to three months. Not only that, patients had to be taking that medication every single day, and it's not necessarily the best medications. SSRIs cause a number of side effects. We know that about 15 to 20% of patients gain weight, about 20 to 25 experience sleep disturbances, they also experience cognitive difficulties, and also 15 to 20% experience a worsening of their anxiety. Taking treatment for three months straight with about a 33% efficacy and a number of side effects, is it really worth it? Now, STAR-D also tested augmentation, which was adjunctive treatment. The outcome of the augmentation at week 12 was about 30% who remitted. So even when you look at these different augmentation strategies, it takes a very long time. But with CYB3, you're often seeing these changes within one day after being given the dose. Not only that, you're seeing an effect size of greater than two compared to SSRIs that have an effect size of about 0.24. Another strength of CYB3 is that it's intermittent dosing. This is not a medication you take every single day. In this trial, they looked at two doses within a one year time span separated by three weeks. So by having a lower number of visits as compared to something like esketamine, where people are having up to 26 sessions a year, or TMS, which can be a total of up to 36 sessions, or even ECT, which can have anywhere between six to 12 sessions. CYB3 only had two sessions in this trial. And the effect was durable for about a year. By having less frequent dosing, it helps reduce the number of visits that a patient has to take. And so it also lowers the barrier to timely care for those patients. Now, a weakness of this trial is that it is a small study, however, they are going to start their phase three program in 2025. So that's gonna include at least over 200 patients. Now, another weakness of this study is that, at least for right now, we don't have the medications that the patients were on outside of their CYB3. So we also don't know if patients added or subtracted any medication as well. But that actually brings us to opportunities, right? So now Cybin is in a position where they could do a post hoc analysis and look at if patients actually tapered off or completely discontinued their background medication during that 12-month follow-up. Now, if there is data and if that's positive data, that represents, again, a whole new shift because now you're giving patients an opportunity to get off of their medication. Now, another opportunity is that this can be seen as an adjunctive medication. By being an adjunctive medication, it allows for the immediate treatment for the patient without having to taper off of their current medication. And why this is important is because it can help prevent any withdrawal symptoms that some patients can experience, especially if they've been on their SSRIs for a number of years. You also avoid any logistical challenges when trying to taper off their medication, especially when you have to do it over a number of weeks. It also allows the patient to retain some of the benefit that they may be achieving on their medication, even though it may be inadequate. Another important aspect of this study is that it was not a psychedelic assisted psychotherapy treatment. There was no psychotherapy. In this study, they did provide psychological support and they also helped ground the patients during the trip. If they got anxious, the facilitator would give them assurance. They helped build rapport. They also helped with giving them strategies post-dose. And they, again, they provided no psychotherapy. Overall, basically good medical practice with one person in the room that was monitoring the patient while they had their trip. Why this is important is because when we think about what this would actually look like in clinical practice, if it was required that a psychotherapist was needed in the room, what that would do would only be to increase the price that this would cost the patient. And if they were able to achieve this without having to do psychotherapy, it really helps streamline the process. Not only that, apparently during this trip, the patient is unable to undergo psychotherapy because they are uninstructable because the experience can be intense. Now, another opportunity is that there are a number of clinics all over the country. 
ketamine clinics, TMS clinics. So the infrastructure is already built up, so you can already get an idea of what this may look like in clinical practice. You can see from an article from January that there's already about 500 to 750 ketamine clinics all over the U.S. Now we know that patients are willing to spend hours away uh, for treatment, as you can see with TMS. So CYB3 represents a new tool for these clinics to easily pick up and adopt and provide another option for patients that are interested in a treatment like this. And to be honest, when it comes to threats, I really don't see any. I do think that there is still a stigma associated with psychedelics, just ask my parents. I do think that's slowly changing and it's only gonna become more prevalent as more states start to decriminalize and provide a legal framework to regulate this. Also, the fact that there's more and more companies that are also bringing other psychedelics to market, such as MindMed, which is looking at generalized anxiety disorder, as well as Compass Pathways and Atai Life Sciences. So with that, I think this data is extremely interesting. I'm very excited to see what Cybin does for their phase three program. Overall, it's a very exciting time, and um, we'll see what 2025 brings. See you next year. Peace. Okay. You guys seen these drones over Jersey? It's weird, right?